Hey, everybody. This is Jake Wynn, a public historian here with my co-host, Justin Voigthofer, for one final video uh, about the uh, Masters of the Air uh, series on Apple TV+. Plus. This time, uh, what we've jokingly referred to as either episode 10 or episode zero um, of the uh, nine-part miniseries. Uh, this is The Bloody 100th, a documentary that accompanies the uh, Masters of the Air TV series all about the 100th bomb group in the Second World War. Uh, what we're going to do for you today is go through a bit of a recap of the documentary, uh, talk a little bit about some of the history we see here, what we liked about this documentary, a little bit of a review, um, and uh, then we're going to share some exciting new news for you if you've enjoyed these videos uh exciting uh there will be more of this kind of content to come uh so we'll uh we'll tease that up now and uh, come back around on that at the end of this episode but uh before we jump into that i just want to check in with you justin how are you doing today i'm doing well i'm doing well i am i thought you were going to say you know the joke you made before we got on the actual mic of this being the one last time jake sang the fantastic version of that song you guys missed out maybe that'll be a, a re-release podcast episode at some point so yeah we're doing well excellent excellent so we're going to do this one more time for you all um and uh, excited to, uh, to to finish out the Masters of the Air series with this uh, pretty pretty great documentary um, that we're going to talk about today. So just a quick recap of what we see in this series. Um, and that is the 100th Bomb Group. We follow them through uh, their Second World War experience in, in Europe. This documentary uh, kind of reveals some uh, of the real story of the, the men that we see in Masters of the Air, the miniseries. Uh, we get some amazing uh, interviews with some of the veterans we see portrayed on screen. Uh, we follow them through the start of the Second World War uh, in the documentary through the end of the conflict. We hear about the real life events as they were depicted in the series and we get some amazing footage, some real footage uh that uh was shot during the war um many cases on these missions up in the air that we see in the miniseries you see the real life thing here uh and these interviews uh, that are performed um some of them decades ago uh when these veterans were all alive most of whom most of these guys are, are gone uh today uh, but it really helps to bring the characters to life and gets us kind of the band of brothers experience all at once instead of seeing uh, kind of different interviews with them over the course of, of the, uh, the mini series, we see them all in this uh, documentary um, that comes in conclusion of the series. Um, so that's kind of a gist of what uh, the Bloody 100th is. Um, this is typical for a Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, Gary Getzman production. We saw it in the, uh, in the other uh, mini series, the Band of Brothers, the Pacific, uh, these kind of documentaries that accompany uh, the, uh, the mini series. You see what's portrayed on screen. You see the real, uh, hear the real veterans. You hear the real story. So they did a, a really good job of bringing the 100th bomb group to life in this documentary. Uh, and with that, we'll transition to kind of some reactions to this. So uh, Justin, I'll kick it over to you. What did you think about the bloody 100th? Yeah, you know, it's funny because looking back and, and kind of thinking about the conversations we've had the past couple months or past month, I guess over a month now, almost two, um, as I initially said, you know, man, I wish they had interviews of veterans in the episodes. I wish they were in the episodes. I wish they, you know, were, were accompanying that. But more that I thought about it after watching this documentary, I'm kind of glad they did it the way they did. Only because um, I think I, Jake and I talked about this. My favorite scene of the entire documentary is the opening scene with Rosie walking up to a plane. And you hear Rosie Rosenthal talking about, isn't a B-17 just beautiful? And it flies great. And it, I don't think it would have been as impactful if that would have been thrown in the episodes before you get to see his whole story and saw his whole kind of experience in the war. So initially saying, you know, and these would be great to be in the episodes, but now thinking back on it, no, it's kind of perfect way it is. You see their whole experience portrayed on screen and then you get to hear from them. Um, I can see why they didn't include it more too, because looking at the folks that they got interviews of, we have Rosie, we have Harry Crosby and Jake. I don't know if there's, I, I can't, I don't know if there's another one that's on screen. Oh, the, um, the one from the POW, um, he's on screen as well. I'll forget his name off the top of my head at the moment. He's a navigator, I think. Um, anyway, I'll have to, I'll kind of do some research as, as this is going on and get you his name too. But those are really the only three that I think I remember 
being actually in the show. Um, you see Colonel Bennett who comes in later on. I think you see him kind of a little bit in the show, but not really a main character. And then you saw some other pilots too um, that may have got a passing mention, but they weren't, you know, the main stars of the show. So I can kind of see why they didn't put it in with the episodes. Once again, I'm glad I, I they did it this way. And even though I said the opposite before, um, seeing the end result, I think it was good. And then finally, I mean, I will have to point out, I think the other part of this this documentary that I love, and I've loved him more and more, is just Jimmy Stewart, man. I just, his voice is great. He's got an incredible story. Um, anytime he pops up in an Army Air Force uniform or something, I kind of just get excited and get nostalgic because um, of what he went through and, and kind of his his war experience. Because he could have kept making these videos. You know, he, he talks about, he oh, I've been in the Air Corps for a year. People in, in Hollywood did not want him to go on missions, but Jimmy Stewart said, nope, I could I could make these videos for the rest of the war and, you know, do my time, but now I want to do some real fighting. And, and was a pilot and flew over 30 missions during the war. So um, anytime I can see him, I think it's great. Um, yeah, so that's why my initial thoughts on the episode, or episode, documentary episode, we can call it episode, right? Episode 10, episode 10, I'm going to call it episode 10. Um, but Jake, how about you? What do you think? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this documentary. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of documentaries. Um, I just love when people just talk at me for like 45, 50 minutes. I love exposition. You probably realize that if you listen to these nine previous episodes about me uh, hemming and hawing about whether I like the series, uh, that I just like people talking at me for for hours on end. So um, so I, I enjoyed this. I thought it was a, a help to, to visualize, um, bring the real people into this um, and get their real perspective. And um, I think their retroactive perspectives are really, really helpful. That's what you get in the Band of Brothers experience. You get their, you get kicking off those Band of Brothers episodes. You get these guys thinking back 70 years on their experiences and you know talking about how cold it was in bastone and crawling into bed at night and saying you know um thank god i'm not in bastone um that's the thing i think that we're missing in the in the series itself with having these separated out is you're not getting that kind of retroactive retrospective insights that may have been helpful to the individual episodes to help kind of create some perspective um but you get them all in this documentary. And so you get that kind of uh, their experiences as viewed through the lens of decades of thinking about this experience and ruminating on it and reckoning with their experiences during the Second World War. Um, I think my favorite part of this documentary is the training montage, um, which we don't see at <laughs> all in the series. But this is just great. You got some awesome 1940s jazz music, you got some thumping drums. Rosie Rosenthal would definitely approve of this uh, this intro <laughs> as a lover of, of jazz music. Um, and you see these guys, a lot of training footage, you hear their experiences. It's fast paced. It moves quick. Uh, and it does a really great job in like three minutes of getting these guys uh, from Pearl Harbor into uniform through flight school training and then over to England and then we're off and running. And I thought it was incredibly well, well done, well made. Um, the pacing was really great. And I really, really enjoyed the, uh, that, that training montage specifically. Um, other thoughts. I love me some Harry Crosby. I, I can't help it. Those of you that may follow my social media, my Facebook channel, uh, Jake Wynn public historian, you may have seen an interview that I posted an excerpt from just from his 1993 book tour when he was, um, uh, uh, debuting his memoir, a wing and a prayer, um, and giving kind of in less than 60 seconds kind of uh the the whole moral conundrum of the war um i'll drop a link to this in the into the description below this video so you can see it for yourself but basically crosby describes like we were young we had no idea what we were doing we were going in we were fighting a good war uh however War is the worst thing that any that humans can be involved in, and it is incredibly morally wrong to flatten cities. Um, and in 60 seconds, he did um, just an incredible job of describing what this all was about. And we see more Crosby in the documentary, um, I think, sitting inside kind of the uh, navigator uh, part of a B-17, which I think is, is pretty cool, just like the Rosie Rosenthal um, sitting outside the B-17, which he describes as like the most beautiful aircraft. Um, I really like the Harry Crosby interviews. Um, just a very verbose, very descriptive um, fellow, and uh, does a does a good job of. We see him as the narrator, uh, or hear him as the narrator throughout Masters of the Air, the miniseries. 
Um, Rosie Rosenthal, amazing. Just every time he's on screen, every time you hear his voice, it's just insightful, goosebump inducing kind of commentary that he provides. And I love the description uh, of him being captured, quote unquote, by the by the Russians, by the Soviets. Um, and describing, you know, yelling uh, Pepsi Cola, Coca Cola, baseball, Babe Ruth, you know, what Americansky. Uh, and uh, we see that in the miniseries as well. And just to hear him describing it in his own words is another one of those kind of like goosebump <laughs> moments. Um, just so good. Um, I know, Justin, you and I talked kind of before we recorded this, um, even I think like a week or so ago, uh, about the intro being to the series being a little odd. It felt like just generic World War II introduction to a documentary um with some more planes and drawings thrown in uh, it was a little weird um but uh, you know what i think overall uh this miniseries uh this documentary accompanying the miniseries is a great addition to documentaries about the second world war from the perspective of of the hundredth bomb group and to give us kind of that perspective the real life story of this of this unit that we see in the series i think they did a great job uh, i think it is a uh, it is a very watchable, very in, kind of enjoyable, insightful uh, documentary and one that uh, no doubt I will return to in the future um, as when I kind of return to Masters of the Air at some point in the future to, to kind of go back and watch it through again with some new eyes. Um, but with that, I'll throw it back over to Justin, uh, to you, um, if you want to get into any of the kind of history, if that you're interested in or, or plucked out from, uh, from this documentary that we, that we might want to discuss. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of wrote it in our notes too. It was kind of like the spark notes version of masters of the air, right? I mean, everything they talked about during the show that you see, they talk about in this documentary, which is great. I love that because that connects the history in a way that is, Oh, I remember them talking about Regensburg. I remember Rosie coming back from, from Munster. I remember that and you kind of know and see, um, as you watch the documentary, you got more of a connection to it, uh, which I think is good. Um, I love the, I mean, I think we've talked about that World War II is the first kind of war that you have these videos and audio files of the actual speeches and everything going on, which I think is something that, you know, I was initially a Civil War guy. I was like, man, I would have loved the Gettysburg Address, right? Oh, but I'd love to hear Lincoln give the Gettysburg Address. We know what the words are, but we just don't hear that. Um, and I, I kind of, wrote down when FDR is talking about, and I don't know if this is, Jake, you might be able to tell me, is this a State of the Union? Do you, you know where this is from? State of the Union is, okay. So the State of the Union, and he says, we believe the Nazis and the fascists have asked for it, and they are going to get it. When he talks about the what is coming their way, what is due their way. Um, I think that that's great that you can see it, you can hear it. Um, kind of gave me some goosebumps too, but it also that right there, I think the reason why they pick that quote is it goes into you know, no matter the cost of the bomber war, right? The bomber war is a very bloody war. It's a very destructive war. Um, and Roosevelt is affirming the United States commitment to waging that type of war to defeat tyranny and fascism throughout the world at that time. So um, I thought that that was a cool kind of quote to pull out um, and kind of explains a lot of what we see in the show and what we hear them talk about of, you know, wrestling with what they're doing. Um, at least at the beginning, Roosevelt saying, no, yeah, we, we are, this is what they have, <laughs> chickens are coming to roost, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then, yeah, and then Jake kind of mentioned this in the intro a little bit, but I do want to highlight it is the footage that you see is battle footage. There are cameramen that go up into the skies with these bomber crews film. There are some cameramen that are shot down and killed over Germany, over Europe during this time too. So I, I just want to give them kudos that what you're seeing is true battle footage and a lot of times the folks who went up there to film that, some of them did not come back. And the heroism that that takes, you know, on top of heroism to go up there in a B-17 and fire at enemy soldiers coming at you, their job was to go up there, get shot at, and film the people shooting at them. Um, that is, the, I guess, the, the the role of a filmmaker during World War II. So just want to point out that, yeah, the, the you see out of Fuji, and there's a great documentary called um, Five Came Back on Netflix that kind of goes into um, this type of footage and this type of role that these cameramen had, some of them coming straight from Hollywood. Um, you know, think about today, it'd be the same thing as the best and brightest cameramen and filmmakers from Hollywood going overseas to film and to document and to um, really put on, on screen for people back home what the experience of their sons and daughters are. Um, so it is a, a yeah, I, I just 
it's my favorite thing about this documentary. And I think the documentary that we'll talk about later on too is that, you know, with, with this air war, you are getting frontline battle footage, um, which is sometimes harder to do uh, on the actual front lines on the ground. So, um, but Jake, how about you? I mean, we, we covered a lot of history already in the show. Is there anything that popped up here that you enjoyed more that you saw or kind of reaffirmed what we saw on the show? Yeah, I just want to say I agree with you, kind of the power of that FDR quote um, from from one of his State of the Union addresses that's prominently featured in the documentary. It's just kind of hits hits home um, with the whole series, but uh, they they framed it so well in the documentary in that section of the of the documentary of the film um, that it really stands out uh, as uh, being kind of representative of you know what's at stake and how much politically we staked on the bomber bomber war uh, on the air war and the idea of strategic bombing that the president of the United States is making a point to address it uh, in the state of the union address. Um, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, I hadn't heard that particular uh, line before. So I think that's part of what <laughs> struck, struck as well as like, yeah. Oh, wow. Like FDR is really on it with that, with that line. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, the documentary did make me think of something that I don't think we had referenced for quite some time, going back to earlier episodes of the mini series, uh, but that is kind of the, we, we wondered very early on whether or not we would see Curtis LeMay, uh, who was the um, commander of, of this part of the, uh, of the, of the eighth air force um, that the hundredth bomb group is in before he later goes on to the Pacific theater. Um, and, you know, he plays a really key role in the, in the Regensburg mission, which is one of the key missions we see in, in Masters of the Air, yet we never see Curtis LeMay. I think he's maybe referenced once or twice in the series, and that's it. Um, I was really surprised by that, in part because LeMay, when you go and you read uh, Masters of the Air, or you read any of the memoirs uh, from these guys, a lot of them are referencing, reference LeMay, and he was this larger than life kind of, um, I don't know, kind of a little bit, a little bit of a villain kind of character, especially when you know what goes on later in his life. Um, but he is as responsible as anyone for the high casualties in the eighth air force, but also someone who is very much responsible for their success as well. Um, especially with, uh, demanding military discipline in the units in the way that they flew, um, was kind of a key piece as well. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that not featuring him in the miniseries was an interesting choice, and I'm glad that he was featured and talked about a little bit in the uh, in the uh, documentary. Um, and last, I'll say, Steven Spielberg is a great commentator uh, for the documentary. Um, I think he did a really good job in this um, kind of describing the experiences of these men. Um, but Donald Miller, the author of Masters of the Air, glad he got his due uh, as well. Um, so, uh, with that being said, uh, you know. I think a lot of people out there are interested in the eighth air force and the air war over Europe. Um, so I'm kind of left asking what's next. Uh, so Justin, what else, what, what else would you suggest um, folks uh, read or, or maybe even visit to learn more about the eighth air force? Yeah. I mean, don't, don't let your interest kind of wane here. If you're stuck around this long, if you're watching these videos, then you are interested in this. And I applaud you for that because it's a really interesting time period to listen to and kind of study. Um, but, with the 8th Air Force, I mean, we've, we've talked about, I think, since episode one, right? The museum in Savannah, Georgia, it's the National Museum of the Mighty 8th Air Force. It's right off of 95. Um, if you're ever going to Savannah, if you're passing through, going to Florida, coming from Florida, going up north, whatever, it is well worth your time. You're going to see a giant plane parked outside of it. Um, so, yeah, well worth your time. There's planes all around it. There's a B-17 inside. They've done a lot with the actors and kind of told the story of and hosted the actors down there. Um, and told the story of them making this documentary and making this series, and then also still have a good connection with what the, the last few remaining 8th Air Force veterans, I'm afraid to say. Um, a lot of them are kind of down in that area, and I think a lot of them are still kind of connect with the museum. So, and if you want to kind of do some research or, or start reading, I mean, we brought it up there. It's called Masters of the Air because of this book. It's Masters of the Air. Um, it's a great book, details the whole entire air war. Um, so it's a good first stop, I think, to really get an understanding of what you saw on the show. Um, but is there anything else they can kind of do, Jake? I mean, from their own home, they can watch a lot, I know, too. So what are your kind of things you want to highlight in that sense? Yeah, I think uh, I have two documentaries that I would suggest. Um, first one being a period documentary, The Memphis Bell, A Story of a Fire Flying Fortress by William Wyler. 
Um, this came out during the war, uh, follows the Memphis Bell and its 25 on its 25th mission, talks about the experience of the 8th Air Force uh, B-17 crews flying over Europe. Um, some amazing footage in that. I would definitely say to, to watch that. It is on Netflix, available to watch, um, connected to uh, series uh, Five Came Back filmmakers. Um, William Wyler is one of those filmmakers featured. And then uh, sort of based on uh, Memphis Bell is a documentary on HBO or, or Max uh, called The Cold Blue, which came out in 2018 or 2019. And this uses remastered footage uh, from that William Wyler shot while making Memphis Bell. So a lot that, of footage that was cut from the film uh, made in the 40s and then had been remastered. And then they put in a lot of veterans interviews over the top of that footage. Um, and that was a very, very well done uh, documentary um, that I would recommend watching. Um, has a lot of the same footage that you see in uh, in the Bloody 100th as well. Um, a lot of that is William Wyler footage. Um, but there's a lot of great uh, books, a lot of great um Articles, um, I'll just breeze through a few here. We've heard some of these before. Um, it's one that I've read recently, uh, written during uh, during the war, right after the Regensburg mission, is I Saw Regensburg Destroyed by Bernie Lay. This was in the Saturday Evening Post in 1943. Um, it is a first-person account of that mission. Bernie Lay was uh, in uh, the flying in uh, the, the front seat of one of those B-17s in, in the 100th bomb group. And he describes a lot of what happens and what we see in the series. Uh, a Wing and a Prayer by Harry Crosby. Uh, Frank Murphy, somebody we see in the documentary, his book, Luck of the Draws, memoirs about a lot of the prisoner experiences. And then there's other books about other units in the 8th Air Force that I would suggest. Um, there's one about Big Week, which we see in... Uh, in the documentary, that's by James Holland. It's called Big Week, the, Bi the biggest air battle of World War II. And then there's another unit, the 303rd, which has another great nickname called Hell's Angels. Um, there's a book by Jay Stout that is about that unit. So uh, you'll find references, all of them that Justin and I made uh, in the description below uh, this video. So you can go and check them out for yourself and definitely recommend reading through uh, and watching and going for a visit to the, uh, to the museum uh, that Justin referenced as well. So um, with all that being said, we have just a little bit of time left here. Um, and with that time, just want to thank you all so much for tuning in to our series on Masters of the Air. Uh, Justin and I had a great time making these videos and uh, chatting with some uh, some experts and some of our friends uh, as we were watching the series. Um, and if you liked what we just made, uh, if you like these videos, um, we think you're going to like our next project. So Justin and I enjoyed chatting so much, we decided we were going to continue <laughs> doing this into the future forever. Uh, just kidding. We don't know if it'll be that long, but uh, we are going to be taking these conversations that we've been having and expand them um, into a podcast form. Um, these, uh, this podcast is going to be called uh, Public History with Jake and Justin. And it's going to be an exploration into how we consume and understand history at museums, historic sites, battlefields, and through movies, books, television, and other popular media. Um, and so we're going to have lots of conversations with those who work at our nation's historic sites. Uh, we're going to chat with authors and filmmakers and share our own experiences as public historians uh, on the front lines of history. Um, but we're also going to be doing um, a lot of what we've enjoyed through Masters of the Air, uh, sharing our thoughts and opinions about how history is interpreted or misinterpreted. Uh, through popular culture. And uh, we have really enjoyed make, having these conversations about Masters of the Air. Um, we're really excited to be able to expand that out to um, a bunch of different aspects of history and different time periods um, and looking at things from different perspectives. And um, we think a lot of the public historians that we know, um, those that we uh, admire out in the field, we want to get into conversations with them and, and share uh, even more of, of these kinds of conversations with you in the future. So uh, you can hop on over as of uh, today uh, <laughs> to your favorite podcasting platform to find Public History with Jake and Justin and be sure to subscribe. We've got a trailer release now um, and we will have uh, episodes coming in the future. I think some exciting conversations we already have uh, lined up, some in the form of more of like what we did with Masters of the Air, talking about some uh, history and popular culture, uh, some upcoming books we're excited to talk about, um, and other topics around public history, which we think are gonna be interesting uh, to, uh, to us for sure. And we hope you'll find them interesting as well. 